All right, gentlemen, I just got this handed to me. A hit and run felony at Ray's Cafe, 208 North Los Angeles. Got a patrolman on site. The coroner's on his way. Get down there, see if you can find any witnesses who can put a make on the car. Mouthpiece tore strips off me at the grand jury. Case got All right, guys, welcome back to L.A. Noir. This is our HD playthrough, and this is case number two under traffic. So, like I said, I'm going to try to uh, make these videos really easy for you guys to follow and uh, know exactly where you want to go, what you want to see. Hopefully, it'll all work out that way. Each video will be one case. I need to go over the case notes. Uh, some cases can get actually uh, pretty long, so I think that's the best way to do it instead of uh, more than one. Looks like the DA is going to press charges, and Rodriguez might do time. I'll speak to the DA. She suffered enough. Mm, I don't know, Cole. She's an easy make, and the DA likes convictions. I'll convince him to let it go. <laughs> How do you do that? I'll give him something better. All right, let's do this. Over here. Cole Phelps, traffic. What have we got? Dick is a white male named Lester Patterson. Walked out of the bar and into the street. Car hit over there, and he ended up here. Dead on impact by the look of it. Have you canvassed the area? The only one with anything useful to contribute is the young lady over there. She lives above the bar, named Shannon Perry. No, it's not a stage name. 24 years old, she left Kansas to follow the yellow brick road. Is that so? We'll take a formal statement later. Right now, we're going to take a look around. All right, I think the first thing we're going to do, in pretty much every case, the first thing you should do is go and check out the body. You should take a look at the body. The poor guy didn't stand a chance. I ended on his face and ended up here. The car must have struck him from behind. All right, let's... Uh... Check the arm here. Usually, there's nothing on the arm unless they're a uh, unless they're a woman and they have some like type of wedding ring that's missing or something like that. But usually, every guy has a wallet. So, California Fire and Life receipt of your application pre-approval. What the sum of sixteen thousand dollars? <laughs> Madison has life insurance. Oh, that's very okay. So, there's a possible motive if we can find one. All right, let's see what else we got. Maybe his wallet. And the other one, yeah. We can notify next of kin. Okay, Lester Patterson. See how much money he has. Huh. Okay, that's it. All right, anything else? Uh, we'll might as well check the head just in case. Nothing unusual there. A lot of uh, that's the head, the arms. Let's try this arm. Notice that's a, a lot of blood towards the uh, the middle of the body where he got hit. So that's a little different. What have you got on the victim? From all reports, he was intoxicated at the time of the accident. I'll know how intoxicated once I've done the autopsy. Looking him over now, I'd say he died on impact. What about the chest wound? Isn't that inconsistent? Very common in auto injuries. Look for a car with a prominent hood ornament. Those things are killers. All right, let's go around and look for some evidence here. It looks like we got at least three different things. Body traveled a good 20 feet. 
I like how that guy's just walking around. <laughs> he ain't doing nothing to help. Alright, so we know the body traveled quite a distance. This blood is a long way from the body. The car must have been going like a bat out of hell. Okay. So the driver managed to brake before the impact. Alright, so that's the skid marks. <laughs> Wait, that never sounds good, does it? Skid marks? Makes me think of underwear. Okay. There's still music playing, so there's more evidence somewhere. Uh, uh. That's never good. It's cool that you have to kind of manipulate it the right way. A knife covered in blood. Could be a steak knife. This is a hit and run case, Phelps. Anyone could have thrown away a kitchen knife. In any case, we'll want tech services to scrub the alleyway before they bag the knife. Okay. There's uh, still music playing. Uh, Alright, it stopped. So obviously, I think we're done as far as... No, I know it's just a bottle, whatever. We do, however, have the witness over here, so let's see if it's we talk yours, to her. Detective. Miss Perry? Yes? I'm Detective Phelps. This is my partner, Detective Bukowski. Alright, here we go. Eyewitness report. Can you tell us what happened? Well, I came to the window because I heard people arguing downstairs. Straight face? Yeah, she's telling the truth. Then what happened? I saw a car hit that poor man and knock him down the street. All right, suspect vehicle description. What kind of car was it? A dark red Lincoln Continental. She seems very sure about that. Her eyes are still pretty much straightforward. We're going to go with truth again. Did you see the license plate? Only the first three letters, I'm afraid. 3C8. Okay, I think we got a... Uh, probably going to need to call that in. The license plate. And next we're going to move on to argument overheard. Tell me more about the argument you heard. Well, there were two voices. A man and a woman. That's all. Oh, there we go. There's something. That's the first time she's actually moved her face in those weird, like, I'm taking a shit ways. So she's obviously uh, either taking a shit or she's lying. And since we have no evidence that she's not taking a shit, we're going to go with doubt. Why are you holding out on us, Miss Perry? I'm sorry. I was hoping to tell my story to the newspapers. I'd like to get my picture in the paper. I'm trying to find work as an actress and things are pretty difficult. Cough it up, sister. We don't have all night. People arguing? They were husband and wife. I could tell by what she was yelling. Intimate things. Very embarrassing for the man. Thank you, Miss Perry. Your information has been very helpful. You can go now. You really think so? I hope you find that driver and put him away. You certainly got away with the dames, Phelps. <laughs> Give it a rest, Bukowski. Let's see what the patrons have to say. I'll take the bartender. You work the rest of the room. All right, ooh, we got a newspaper. Shrink to the stars. Promises mental breakthrough. Hollywood elite taken with unconventional therapies. Dr. Harlan J. Fontaine. Test subject shows dramatic improvement, says Doc. Let's read it. Courtney, come in. Have a seat. Thanks, Doctor. 
How are you finding working at the clinic? It's, uh, fine. Are you sure? Can I be honest with you, doctor? I would hope so, Courtney. I was hoping that the therapy would be more beneficial. Treatment can, unfortunately, be very long-term. So many of the patients here are addicts, doctor. Many of them have been for years, Courtney. In the past, these people were condemned to sanatoriums. We can reveal the root of the problem. Then we have a chance to help them. And until then, they stay sedated? Do I detect a hint of reproach, Courtney? I was expecting more, Doctor. I'm sorry. I don't mean to criticize. Part of being a physician, Courtney, is learning to be patient. How is it possible to keep so many of them on their medications, Doctor? Many of their addictions are illegal. Oh, many things in life are gray, Courtney. What may on the surface appear to be illegal is actually a benefit to society at large. All right. Let's go ahead and answer, uh, or should I say question this bartender here. I'm Detective Phelps of the LAPD. How can I help, Detective? Your name would be a good start. Dudley Lynch. Hired help. I run the place when the owner ain't around. Where is the owner? He stepped out. Somebody had to take Lorna, Mrs. Patterson, home. All right. Let's see. What are we going to start with? Hit and run incident. What can you tell me about the accident? Not a lot. It was busy in here, and all I heard was the impact. OK, he's looking away. He's wanting to tell us something, but he's afraid to, but we have no other evidence, so we're going to go with doubt. So what was he doing outside? It's against licensing regulations to drink on the sidewalk. Mr. and Lorna were having a fight. The owner made him take it outside. It was pretty ugly. I don't know why he wouldn't want to tell us that. Uh, association with victim. Do you know the victim? Yeah. Lester Patterson. He's a regular here, or he was. Hmm. Okay, well, he was pretty much straightforward, honest. His, his face is all about the truth, so we're going to go with the truth. Not one of your favorite customers? Lester was special, but not my kind of special. Was Lester drinking alone? No. He came here with his wife. She didn't seem too interested in the booze, though. Hmm. <laughs> All right, and the last question, argument overheard in bar. A witness overheard an argument. Lester and Lorna, there's nothing like airing your dirty laundry in public, is there? Oh, he's turning away again, which leaves out truth, and we don't have really that much evidence, so we're going to go with doubt. Why was Lorna Patterson in such a hurry to leave? What is going on here? Lorna was pretty upset, so Leroy took her home. Lorna and Leroy are close. They've been talking about opening a new bar. Leroy? Leroy Sabo? The owner? Hmm. Oh, it looks like that added something for us. And I'm going to say this before I go on to the next question. The music. Like, the more, the further you get into the, um, the interview, the, that constant note just, like, rises more and more. And I, I love that. It's, you know, being the, a musician myself, I just, I love that. How long have Lorna and Leroy been talking about this new bar? Who knows? I just served the drinks. All right, bullshit. <laughs> he's got that smirk on his face, so he's down again. Bartenders hear all sorts of things. Are you going to tell me, or do we have to start playing rough? When Lester was drinking, he treated Lorna like dirt. He gambled away all their money. Lorna pitched Leroy about the bar. I don't know how interested he is. Is Leroy doing well? Hell no. The only thing keeping this place afloat are the poker games. Thanks for your help, Lynch. I'm going to need you to sign a statement with the patrolman. Sure, no problem. You get anything out of the regulars? They weren't giving too much away. They liked watching Lester and Lorna go a few rounds every other day. 
And Lester was a fan of the love tap. Okay, we need to make a phone call. We can find out that license plate and trace it. Operator, give me R and I. Putting you through now. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How can I help, Detective? I need to run a partial license plate, three Charles eight. Cross check possible Lincoln owners. Suspect vehicle is a red Lincoln Continental. Just a moment, Detective. Only one possible make on that license. Registered to a William Shelton, 738 West Temple Street. Thank you. All right, we know where we're going. Looks like we caught a break on this one. All right, and as far as uh, commentary goes, uh, this is definitely more of a serious kind of a playthrough. I don't see too much joking. I'm going to have fun with it as much as I can, but I'm really into detective comics and uh, detective kind of noir stories and stuff like that, and I really want to find out, you know, what's going on with all these cases, and it, it interests me a lot. So don't expect there to be, you know, all this funny bullshit kind of talk, so... But I think as of right now we're gonna go to the Shelton You're residence. The, wheel. <laughs> Do we know where we're going? the reason we're going to the uh, Shelton residence is because that's the uh, the hit and run part, and we're gonna go there first and see if we can catch up with this guy. right there William Shelton yes it doesn't look good Shelton you packing your bags and making a run for it you know why we're here yes the accident we've got witnesses who can put this car at the scene not to mention the physical damage this is open and shut Shelton all right so we got a chase scene on our hands let's do this that coward thinks he can run from everything. And we'll try not to fail. But I've, I've heard a lot that the, uh, the controls for driving aren't, uh, aren't the Enough best. Enough games, Phelps. Take this guy out. I think I need to get close so he can shoot out the tires. I'm gonna try not to do is uh, uh, a lot of damage. Wheel arches. Come on. No I wonder if you killed someone driving like this. Maniac. Oh shit. Don't let that asshole get away. I'm trying, but it's so slow. Alright, he took a left. And he took another left. All right, we're catching back up with him. I don't know how many times you actually have to hit this guy. Really? Holy shit, man. This guy's a good driver. He's heading into the station. Go on, get after it. All right, that was a vehicular man slaughter rap sound, Shelton. I hit him. I admit it. I just panicked, but it wasn't my fault. What do you mean? The guy jumped right out in front of me. He came out of nowhere. There's nothing I could do about it. Why didn't you stop? I've had accidents before. That's it. We're done here. The DA is going to love you. They weren't all my fault. I'm a surveyor. I need my license for my job. 
There were people around. A woman and a man were standing right next to him. I thought they could get him to a hospital. I'm telling you, it's not my fault. The guy is dead, Shelton. You can't be serious. William Shelton, you're coming downtown. We need to talk about a manslaughter charge. <laughs> Leave the coroner and the paperwork. Procedure can wait. We should probably go speak to the wife and let her know what's happening. OK. You become all hard at the prospect of paperwork, don't you? <laughs> all right. Like I said, we're going to have him drive. And can we are now going uh, to the Patterson going? residence. So as you can see, this game definitely has a mixture of that action, uh, exploring, and detective work. Perfect combination, I think. So the wife was there when it happened, but then left the scene. You're right. That's pretty unusual behavior. She could be in shock. I saw some people do some strange things in the war after their buddies got hurt. Maybe. Maybe she doesn't give a fuck. According to the patrons, her old man was a piece of work. You don't think... Phelps, the guy was run over. So it worked out well for this broad. So this guy's what? a horrible driver. Maybe she deserved to catch a break. He's worse than me. No. All right, we are at the uh, Patterson residence. And we're going to get to the uh, bottom of this. Yes? Hello? Mrs. Patterson. Is this about my husband? We're investigating the incident, ma'am. I see. Come in, won't you? All right, well, let's talk to her. Can you tell me what happened? What's to tell? He got hit by a car, and now he's dead. You don't appear to be too upset about the fact. Lester and I met on a furlough in 44. We got married that weekend. People don't understand it now, but that happened a lot back then. I see. So you probably did well to stick it out this long. What's that supposed to mean, mister? I think it's about time you left. I have someone here, I and beg I... your pardon? You're gonna have to run that one by us again, sister. It's okay, Lorna. I'm Leroy Sabo. Well, well. Nice to see you're comforting the grieving widow, Mr. Sabo. All right, wise guy. Do you have any intelligent questions you would like me to answer? You can confirm Mrs. Patterson's story. Lester lost at cards. He was kind of hard to control when he lost his temper. He turned without looking and walked right out in front of the car. It wasn't good. What's your relationship with Mrs. Patterson, Mr. Sabo? We're friends, good friends. You expect me to believe that? Look, I was filing for divorce. Mental cruelty. Lester could be a mean son of a bitch. And Lester knew about that? No, I hadn't told him. Well, hasn't this worked out well for the two of you? I feel almost bad for busting in on this little rendezvous. All right, here we go. Laura Patterson, blonde, 33. She's pretty hot. That's, uh, that's pretty sad when you think a video game character is hot, but since it's based off of reality, I don't feel so bad about it. Hit and run incident. Here we go. How did the car come to hit Lester? He walked straight into the path of an oncoming car. Hmm. Did you see that? She like, oh, there. Yeah, about that. We're going to go with doubt because she's a piece of crap and she's lying. You expect me to believe that, Lorna. It's all very convenient. Gambling for Lester was like the needle for a hophead. He was yelling at me. He was yelling at the whole world. I kind of felt sorry for the driver. Poor guy had no chance. All right, the nature of the argument. You were arguing in the bar and on the sidewalk? We were always arguing. So what? Oh, I just saw her swallow. She's still looking around. She's doubting again. Admit it. You were baiting him, pushing his buttons. We can easily get the full story from the regulars in the bar. All right. 
Lester was playing cards out back. He lost, of course, and wanted back in. He suggested I earn the money on my back to get a mistake. That was the proposition he was putting to his so-called buddies. So maybe I was a little angrier than usual. Let's just say I took exception to his idea. All right. Partnership with Leroy Sabo. The bartender said that you and Leroy were planning to go into business together. Can you explain how you'll get the money to do that? I have a little money saved away. Yeah, you have a little money saved away, my ass. Look at your face. And, if I'm not, let's see, what, do, do we even get any evidence? Ye yeah, we did. We got an uh, insurance policy, so we're going to try to use that and see what that does for us. We're going to go with lie. You're being economical with the truth, Lorna. You want to back that up, little man? Gonna back that up. Uh, let's see, Red Lincoln Continental Insurance Letter. There we go. You increase the premium on Lester's life insurance. GI insurance policies have a $10,000 payout. It was Leroy's idea. Lester lived on the edge. He was always getting into fights, crap games, pinochle, you name it. Turns out it was good advice. It speaks to motive and premeditation, Lorna. You're forgetting the hit and run detective. <laughs> You and Mr. Sabo have an interesting day. I'm sure we will, officer. Now, if you could both just leave. We're leaving, ma'am. Sorry for your loss. I can see what a tough time you're having with all this. That's right. She ain't doing a very good job of playing it off, because we all know something's going on. Let's see. There's no music, but there is a, a phone thing somewhere. Does that mean we need to make a call? Press A? Yeah. Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you through now. Cole Phelps, batch 1247. How can I help, detective? Are there any messages for me? Just one detective from the coroner. Message reads, Phelps, see me at Central Morgue immediately. Results of the Patterson autopsy. Thanks, man. All right. Looks like we know where we're going. There's no music in here, which means there's no evidence, so. We are heading to the city morgue. You can drive. And where exactly are we going? Well, we're going to the Los Angeles city morgue for Central Division. Yeehaw! Like how they, all the houses look so authentic and real. It's just amazing the detail in this game. Go. The bird gets the worm. The second mouse gets the cheese. Isn't that the cop who caught the guy that was pretending to be dead? Yep, that's me. Oh, here's a body. We can put the driver in front of a judge in less than a week. You'd be making a big mistake. Run that by me again? The victim was dead before the car hit him. Two puncture wounds to the right side of the thorax. Second puncture reached his heart kidding me been doing this job 23 years son no one's ever laughed at one of my jokes he was stabbed to death long sharp knife length of a bayonet we found a knife in the alleyway where is it now was it bagged by patrolman kaplan perfect i'll get you a definite match jesus we got him murder one we were right there and they tried to stare us down now they'll both get the gas chamber we have the knife we have the coroner's report and I bet we could roll Sabo as a witness. Let's bring her in. All right, let's do it. Looks like we are going back to El Paternasunos. <laughs> we should drive the morgue car. We'll stick to what they give us. You know the way. You can drive. All right. Where to? <laughs> you know the Gosh, man. Okay, just walk through my body, buddy. You know, hey. I'm only a part of this world. You can walk through me. All 
Alright, here we go. He's spoken to the coroner, Mrs. Patterson. He confirmed your husband's cause of death. We'd like you to come downtown and answer some questions. It wasn't me. It was Leroy's idea. Leroy stabbed him. I had nothing to do with it. Where is Leroy now? He's in the bedroom. You're very good, Lorna. Put the gun down, Leroy. If you do something stupid now, you don't stand a chance in front of the grand Nice of you to give me up, sweetheart. All that whispering in my ear telling me how we had to get rid of him, how good it could be, all the money we could claim, all that planning, how to get him into the street, how to make it look like an accident. For God's sake, you Leroy, all shut the up. You bases covered, baby. I have nothing to do, do with You think it. I'm going to fry for you, He's Lorna? He's a crazy man. Shoot him. Shoot him, for God's sake. Oh, shit. It's too late, Sabo. Oh, you got away. Oh, come on. I wish you could run a little faster. Come on, man. You're supposed to be this awesome guy. You can't even run fast. Oh, shit. You stay back. I'll ice this one. I don't care. Put the weapon down now. Yeah. <laughs> I got you, girl. Don't worry. It's all in the day's work. You look spooked, Phelps. I thought you'd been under fire before. It never gets any easier, Bukowski. Yeah, but the good root beer sign in the back uh, is a good product placement. So, I give you a hit and run. You bring me back fraud, conspiracy, and first degree murder. This is how a good detective operates, Phelps. You take nothing at face value. You keep digging and asking questions until you get to the truth. You got some sharp elbows on you, detective. I like that. Keep up the good work. Well, you know, I couldn't have done it without my, uh, my partner, Stukam Bukowski. He was uh, pretty much instrumental in uh, helping me uh, figure out this case. I want to thank everybody, the uh, Los Angeles Police Department. I would like to thank uh, my wife. Uh, she's a great person who helps me get up in the morning by cooking me pancakes. And uh, see, case notes here, another visit to Ray's, and you would have seen what Leroy was prepared to do to avoid jail. Hmm. So we could have went back to Ray's. Oh, that was different. We caused $421 in city damage because we hit some telephone poles and shit, and $112 in vehicle damage. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching this uh, case, A Marriage Made in Heaven. And uh, please come back for my uh, next playthrough, which will be part three, I believe. No, this is part three, which will be part four. I'm not sure what case it is, but uh, it's going to be fun. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Comment, rate, subscribe, and uh, peace out. Bitches!